Hi everybody! In today's video, I am going to share with you some themed sensory bin ideas using our non-food sensory materials from my last video. In my last video, I shared 20 different types of non-food sensory materials you can use to put together sensory bins for your preschooler. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use those materials and which ones I put together to create different themed sensory bins. If you're new here, my name is Bailey, and on this channel, I share tips and advice for doing preschool at home and encouraging your kids to play with purpose. If that sounds like something you'd like to watch on a regular basis, then please consider subscribing. I have done a previous video on sensory bin ideas back when I first started my channel, so I will definitely have that video linked up above and down below for you to check out later. But in that video, it did have some sensory bins with food materials such as rice or pasta. So if you are looking for non-food sensory materials, then this is the video for you. So the first sensory bin that I'm going to talk with you about is going to be the easiest one that you could possibly put together. We are only going to be using one sensory material and that is water. So this is going to be extremely basic, but highly engaging. So the sensory bin we're going to talk about is sinking and floating. This is something that's a, a scientific type sensory bin, definitely has a lot of a science material that you could cover. So this would be a great one if you're talking about the ocean or let's say on Earth Day when we're talking about recycling and things like that. Uh, we could talk about how there's all kinds of things floating in our ocean that shouldn't be there. Uh, things like that. That would be a great time to do the sensory bin. Um, and then within your playing, this is a great one for conversing with your child about several different topics. Let's talk about the theme itself. Uh, Earth Day or whatever it is you want to do or if it's just for fun um, talk about the sinking and floating and then let's talk about each object in particular what is this made of and why does it float um, and so this is a, just a, a really good one to actually engage with your child play with them and let's enhance their vocabulary and their scientific knowledge with this particular sensory bin. The next sensory bin is a frog habitat. And so I really like this one. It doesn't even have to just be frogs. You can do the whole pond itself with several different animals, or let's talk about the ocean, just something um, involving the water, but then mixing in other materials as well. So we have uh, some pebbles in here. We have a nice big log that we've just kind of always had um, for the frogs to sit on. And then I have a lily pad here. Let's pretend this is green, apparently. I ran out of green foam. So we have a lily pad here to talk about as well. And then I threw in all of our little frog figures. We have some from Dollar Tree. And then I also have the frog uh, life cycle set from Safari LTD that has the full life cycle here. And so we will also explore uh, this discussion as well. And so this is just a really fun one to talk about habitats in general and all the things that are involved and then exploring these different materials within this one sensory bin. So it's still simple, but I guarantee that they're going to love it. The next sensory bin we are going to do is about the Arctic. So this is going to be our chance to play with ice. Uh, for this particular sensory bin, I would normally have my kids either play outside, especially during the summertime to help cool them down. It's just a fun activity to do outside. Uh, or in my kitchen where there's tile on the floor. But for the sake of this video and where I'm at right now, I just laid a towel down on the floor. You can see here um, to try and soak up any water that might splash or anything like that. So for our Arctic sensory bin, you can see here I have a giant block of ice. Uh, with our Arctic figures inside. So basically, I used a uh, baking pan or this like serving tray that somehow we have. Um, and so with this, I did three layers of ice. So you do a layer, you put some figures in there and you let it freeze. Then once you know it's solid, then you do another layer of water with more figures and you do that three times. That way you have animals all throughout the ice and instead of just having them all on the bottom. Now, because I was wanting to film this, uh, I was rushing the process. So a lot of my animals sunk down to the bottom, uh, but we still have a couple here on top. So you get the idea. So this is our Arctic 
ice thing. So what we're going to do is try to get this out of the pan by flipping it over. And then I have just a measuring cup here of water and I have some water squirters. And so now I'm just going to, well, it'll probably be easier if I just uh, pour some of this water on here. There we go. There's the pop. And so now it should release from the pan. And there you go. Nice and simple, right? There's even some bubbles here where you can see. And if you want to flip it back over, you can. It really doesn't matter. Now you're just going to let the kids play with the water. This is uh, some warm water. That way it's a different temperature. And then you get the water squirters and you're going to have them just go at it, squirting the water at the ice. And this is going to start melting it. And so we want to excavate these animals from the Arctic ice. I did wanted to show you another option. If you didn't have a big pan to make this big of an ice cube, uh, you could also use a Dollar Tree muffin tin as well and make little miniature ones. So we have um, this one here and I added blue food coloring to these just to make it a little cute. Um, and you can do the same thing with these. Uh, it just easily pops out of the muffin tin and we're going to do the same thing and try to get the, uh, what is this, the killer whale out. Um, and so as you can see, this is going to be a blast. This particular sensory bin is perfect for this time of year. Christmas is in about a week, and so this would be the perfect time to try out this sensory bin. So I have thrown in different types of uh, fake snow from the Dollar Tree. We have really super tiny and then just a little bit bigger than that. So I like that the two sizes add a... Um, textural dimension to this, I guess. Then I also had some styrofoam balls on hand from a craft kit. So I threw those in here as well. Even these super large ones I think would be fun to play with. Then we have a gingerbread house from the Dollar Tree. Some bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree. And then I just recently found these wooden uh, Christmas figure toys from the store Daiso Japan. When we went to uh, San Francisco, I was able to go into that store and this was one of the things that I picked up. They are the most adorable little toys on the planet and so I really love the snowman. And so I also threw these in just for them to play with um, and they can just do whatever they want. Um, and we could even try to build a snowman and glue them together if we wanted to and make their own little snowman. Um, so yeah, we could really just leave this open for them to have a little Christmas scene. The next sensory bin we are going to explore is a cloud sensory bin. So this would obviously be a great one when you're talking about weather with your toddlers or even your early preschoolers. Let's explore clouds and what all they are about. So for this particular sensory bin, we just need some shaving cream. I grabbed this bottle from the Dollar Tree. And then we are also going to use some food colors. And so I thought clouds... Uh, the shaving cream would be great because it's fluffy. Um, and then with clouds come rainbows. I don't know about your kids, but my kids love rainbows. So let's try to create our own with the food coloring. And we'll just sprinkle this around a few dots here and there. And let's see what type of rainbow we can form. So now they can either use a tool or their hands, really doesn't matter. And let's mix this up in our shaving cream. So isn't that fun? So even if you're using a tool or your hands, mixing these colors in is going to be a lot of fun for your kids. And again, this is a great opportunity to talk about clouds or rainbows. Um, and this is just a new one to explore because this shaving cream is a totally different um, material than you would normally use. I think they would have a blast with this. This next sensory bin is going to be another one that we can do during a weather week when we want to talk about clouds and rain. So this is when we're really going to talk about how clouds work, where rain comes from, um, and then really try to make our own. So with this, we have a tall container here. Then we have a broccoli steamer and some cotton balls for our cloud. 
Then we have just some blue water with food coloring. And then some, uh, what do you call these? Just the little water squirters. Um, these, this is one we just had on hand. This came from, you know, a medicine uh, thing. And then this one came from Learning Resources, their fine motor tool set. And I can link that down below in the description box if you're interested. So this particular idea is not my idea. Let me like make sure everyone knows that. I saw this on Pinterest uh, several years ago. And we have done this several times. The boys absolutely love this and they will play with it for hours. Um, and so I will link to the original blog post down below in the description box so the, uh, the original um, person can get the credit that they are due. Um, but I did want to mention this one just because it's so cool. So in order to talk about clouds, let's talk about how clouds are made of water. Um, and then when they start to get too heavy, that's when the rain comes down. So now we're going to do that ourselves. So we're just going to start squirting water into our cloud here. And then just like a real cloud, once it starts to get full and get heavy, then you're going to see the rain start to drip down. Now you can see it start to drip down into the container and you can see that we are making rain. And if your kids are anything like my kids, at some point, once the cotton balls are all soaked up, then they're going to start using their hands and squeezing them. And they're going to want to play with this because this thing is fascinating. And so that's why you definitely need the bin for when they make a mess. But this is definitely one that you should try. The next sensory bin we're going to talk about is for bugs and insects. With this particular bin, I have included our green Easter grass and we have this patch of fake grass here as well and so this is just a way to create a little habitat for our bugs. Now the bug figures themselves have come from Dollar Tree. They actually have some cute sets here um, and then they have the little bit cheaper sets um, that are just a straight color um, and then we also have some higher quality ones. These are from a butterfly set I actually think came from National Republic maybe and then we have some from Safari LTD where it's the butterfly uh, life cycle uh, kit and so with all this together we have made a little bug habitat then I like to include some tools so we have some uh, bug catching kits from the Dollar Tree and so now we can try to search for the different bugs whether you want to call them out and say can you find the uh, tarantula let's find the tarantula and then you can go with your tweezers pick them up and let's put them inside of our bug catching kit and then with that we can ex uh, talk about each insect where do they like to hide what do they like to eat uh, different things like that so this is definitely one of my kids favorite sensory bins now we are going to do an Easter sensory bin. Now you don't have to do this at Easter time, but since we're using Easter grass and Easter eggs, why not, right? So for this particular one, I have done something similar before using our alphabet Easter eggs here. We just have some uh, smiley face Easter eggs, but regular Easter eggs are just fine. Um, and then we have items from my DIY phonics box, which I have done a previous video on before. This just has little objects for each um, letter of the alphabet that I have collected over the years, um, just random pieces. So I have taken um, about half the letters from my box to put them in there just for the sake of the video. Um, you wouldn't be able to see them all anyway, uh, but ordinarily I would have all the eggs in here and all the objects for the entire alphabet. So then they would just go through and because the Easter grass can be manipulated so well, you can really hide all of these objects really well. Um, and th then they will just go through and find, here's the letter B. Now can I find the letter B object? And I am not gonna find this, I'm sure. But let's pretend that this guitar is the letter B. So we are going to put this in here and there we go there's one down and then they'll move on to the next one. Oh, look here's a match so we have the letter h and we have a hand so now they will put the object inside of the egg and so they'll just continue going trying to find all of the objects 
The next sensory bed we are going to do is obviously a beach themed sensory bed. So this is a great one for those of you that have no access to a beach whatsoever. Let's bring the beach to you. So this is just kinetic sand and then a couple of packages of seashells that I've gotten from both the 99 cent store and Dollar Tree. Um, so if you don't have access to seashells, that's the place to look. And then what's great about using kinetic sand with the seashells is that you can use the seashells themselves as a mold with your kinetic sand. So as you can see, the kinetic sand will mold and shape. So let's try to make our own little seashell here. So let me just pat this in real quick. Okay, now that I have it formed on here, let's see if we can pop it out. And look, we made our own seashell. So this one is going to be a lot of fun for creating and exploring. And you can even um, figure out a way to get access to some beach toys. Again, you can find those at Dollar Tree during the summertime um, and create your own sand castles right there in your own house. This next sensory bin is going to be another easy one that you can do from a really early age, but it's going to take your traditional puzzle Instead of just giving them a puzzle and having them do it over and over and over again, it'll start to lose ex its excitement. Then you can take the pieces and put them inside of a sensory bin. And so what I have done here is I have put several different textures in here to cover up the puzzle pieces and make it a little bit more challenging for them to find the puzzle pieces themselves. So we have the shredded paper that came from the Dollar Tree. You could also just use shredded paper from your paper shredding machine. Um, and then we have pom-poms just to add an extra little something to it and then I threw in these gemstones that again you can find at a dollar store and so with all these different textures it makes it a little bit more challenging to find the puzzle pieces and this particular puzzle um, has the puzzle pieces with a li little bit of a gloss to them these are just like chipboard puzzle pieces but with the gloss and the gemstones together, when they reach their hands in, it won't be immediately noticed that there's a puzzle piece there. So that's why I liked adding this particular texture to this sensory bin. So we don't want it to be too obvious where the puzzle pieces are. So then they can just start finding their pieces and plugging them into the sensory bin. So this just makes their typical puzzles that they've done a million times a little bit more exciting. All right, everybody, those were my ideas for using non-food sensory materials in your themed sensory bins. If you'd like more ideas, make sure to check out my previous videos with sensory bin ideas, also the different types of non-food sensory materials you can use, and I even have a video on my sensory bin storage, so make sure to check out those videos below. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye.